<laughs> what is up? Back at Hillbilly John's house. He inherited the Mustang from me. Because I didn't want another project like that. We just got done changing the fuel pump. And we try to make a little shortcut today by cutting a hole. And actually, next time, if you have to open that up, there's his access. Of course, he's going to have to seal that with the carpet or something so he doesn't get fumigated. But This thing was acting up, and we we're trying to monitor fuel pressure. And look at this. Here's the sock. Oh, that crud right here. It did keep most of it out of the pump, but look at the bottom of this little thing here. It's just deep. With this shit. Then you have this little valve on the bottom where it lets fuel get into the little thing here. Just like that anti slosh thing. Look at that. It's full of garbage. It's like. So. Showed him how to use Forescan here. Hey, go back to your little. Uh, there we go. Go back to the. Uh, where we see the pressures. Yeah, it's right there. No, no, where we actually see the numbers. He wants the tables. Yeah. There we go. So fill pressure right at 40 now? Yeah. It's pulse width modulation. It still had that pump that from my 96 in here that didn't go to it, the high pressure one, the racing one. I'm surprised it ever worked, but now we see it wasn't the pump that was fucked up, it was that thing. But we had that on here earlier and I never thought of recording, but it actually started acting up and then it dropped all the way down to like 20 psi, 10 psi. After you let it run a long time, then like eight, <laughs> and it started shaking and missing. And the pump started lean. making weird sounds. Going so. super lean. Yeah, so now it seems to be running normal pressure again. So, that's cool. For a scan of the rescue, though. But, just to make sure the transducer was even reading correctly on the engine, I had this hooked up. This Brigman sacrificed one of his cans of fix-a-flat. I go, do you have fix-a-flat? Because I know they have the thread-on style Schrader Court hoses. And he said, yeah, I didn't want to give it up, but I cut the hose off of that can of fix-a-flat. I know these thread on but it doesn't push the core it's so deep enough to just loosen the core with the tool but then yeah this was our mechanical pressure <laughs> gauge an old refrigerant gauge there and it matched what the computer was reporting at all times so we were satisfied that the transducer was reading correctly and so the diagnosis is a fuel delivery problem so hopefully that's it he also we also had like a miss DTC was set for cylinder number four, but maybe it was just related to that. So, all right, so the pig duster version two is ready to roll. <laughs> How come we'll read the codes? The codes, DTC? Okay, hit it. Oh, there probably is none. Hit it. Now go to the read at the bottom, which is the Nothing left there. one. That's clear. Hit Nothing. that one. It is, there's just no codes. It has to set a code. Your check engine light would be on if there was one, usually. Where it says, uh, well, see here it says this is the miscount, so you are still getting misfires. It's up to 25 now. I don't think that was carrying. And that's that total, was it, did it still have some from earlier? Nope. No, so that's just since we restarted it? Yeah. That's revenue, they did that. Yeah, so you, you might have a miss, like I said, wait for it to set the code, see if it's still number four. If it is, change a, change a, change the coil over, for example, to, another, to that front cylinder. Clear your DTC, which you just do down here. Get the check engine light off, and then wait till it shows up again. If it's still on the same cylinder, then swap an injector or something, or a spark plug. And eventually, you might find out which one of the three it probably is. Yeah, it's not throwing a check engine with that misfire. Yeah, it probably does it after a certain reach, which is a threshold or something. Yeah. Uh, usually, it's 50 miles. And you know, getting a misfire here and there happens. You know, a lot. You know, on some vehicles. I mean, it's not the, end of the more, world. How do I add more? Stuff? Okay, so stop. Oh, that's why I cut it. Yeah, and then you hit that that engine, that little gear thing down there, and then right there. Remember how you can move them over, or just double tap. You can move them over or move them back. You can use the arrows, or you can just double tap on those works. So you need to scroll Time that up and down. Engine start. So anyway, yeah. So yeah. it's running. We hacked it. <laughs> yeah, but it's a pacing car now. You don't even have to go through emission tests up here either. So. Yeah. So. <laughs> anyway, daughter's waiting for me to get done. I didn't think of making any recording earlier, but we were 
we, we spent like an hour just getting this one fitting off. We couldn't get What's that the, tool to pop the fuel line off. Delta we had the tool in it. Feedback, it pressure, off. exhaust, gas recirculation. Uh, I don't know. Delta would mean a difference. So I don't know. It's probably reading across the EGR to know if it's working maybe. Oh, let me, we have to get an update of the truck since uh, they remember us working on that to change it. John got mad at the lock on his door <laughs> on Hillbilly Deluxe. So I guess he took the saws all to it, and his easiest fix was just to go get a whole nother door so it matches really well. <laughs> and then uh, his hood, I guess he didn't, somebody just pointed out that the safety latch didn't work, and then the next time he drives it, guess what, he didn't have a latch down, bam! <laughs> so that's different, so he's got some white parts from the junkyard now. Yeah, I'll put it on the screen. His truck he had before this one, <laughs> same thing, man. It went through cycles. It was all one color, was blue. And then he got parts from Brian's truck, so it had a yellow hood, a yellow door, I think, or fender or something. And then, uh, and then eventually his boss, because he was a subcontractor for Cox, had paid him to get an Earl Shives cheap paint job, and he made it all white. So now he's a subcontractor for somebody installing in and out up here in the mountains. <laughs> Maybe they'll, they'll pay for him to have a paint job on this Hillbilly Deluxe. So, do you want to live in Payson forever? Huh? You want to step in Payson instead of Phoenix? What if we sold a house down there and we moved up here and you were a Payson girl? You best know we're going to go get my friends a lot. No. Driving up here. Drive your friends up here. You make new friends. You, go, you up here? Friends? You up here? You get some cow tipping friends. You ever gone cow tipping? So you sneak up on cows at night when they're sleeping and they sleep standing up and you push them over. I hope they don't land on you. Yeah. Anyway. Alright. That's enough fun we can have. Catch you guys later.